Hello Rambos, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video because today we are going to be doing a full face of CoverGirl. Pretty sure this is the first time I've ever used CoverGirl products. I mean, I may have used them when I was like a teenager when the wheel was made but in all honesty like I have not used their products for such a long time you guys know my channel well you may not know if you're new welcome uh, so my channel is a cruelty free channel so everything all makeup hair care all that jazz you see here on my channel is all cruelty free I've been cruelty free for maybe I don't know six years or so now um, so I've learned a lot along the way and this is like one of the biggest things to have happened I think in the cruelty free world for such a long time for a major major company to go nah we're no longer selling in China pull out of all of that and become cruelty free is awesome usually it's the other way around usually you know you have this amazing cruelty free company that then sell out to China are no longer cruelty free like that happens so often so this this is such an amazing move and it's so awesome of CoverGirl to finally have like made the shift for cruelty free cosmetics because there is such a market for it and I've done many videos in the past if you guys want to see if you guys want to know the truth about what actually happens in the industry I've done this awesome video called the face of animal testing there's no harmful images of animals or anything like that in this video so if you guys want to see it it's basically me recreating what animals go through on my own face using cruelty free special effects makeup because I love special effects check that out if you haven't seen it if god epic intro man god I've just come back from CrossFit had a shower have not brushed my hair for like a week <sighs> mum life I've been actually I've had these products for such a long time wanting to film this video for ages because it's nothing new like CoverGirl has been cruelty free oh damn it Hazel just woke up I'll be back <sighs> wow I feel like I spent more time trying to get her asleep than what she actually spent asleep you want to have some cuddles? <laughs> you? You want to wave hello? Do you want to say hello? Hello? You be she's being shy. I bought quite a few of their products. I think I've got stuff for a full face from memory. I, I really hope I do. Okay, so I just had a look at the products. The only things I didn't get was a bronzer or contouring kind of powder because they didn't seem like they had them, but I they were just really, really orange and I didn't get a blush but or highlighter but I guess we can use one of the shadows for a highlighter so foundation this is their stay luminous natural glow foundation got the shade 825 I think this is buff beige um, so it says it gives your skin even coverage and a natural glow that lasts all day let's just try this out I'm gonna give it a shake I've got my damp beauty blender I have no idea what color like if this is going to be the right color because you know I bought it online and I just thought mm, okay hopefully it is it seems quite kind of thick oh yeah I think that colors right oh it's got quite a strong smell to it what does that smell like oh man it's like a like hate like nuts some type of nut smell I don't know does it have <laughs> does it contain nuts it actually honestly smells like nuts the ingredients are in a different friggin language why are the ingredients in a different language but it honestly smells like nuts so it's definitely like it does leave a streak um, applying this with a brush you'd probably have to go back over with a sponge it definitely seems like it's kind of sitting on the top of my skin and that smell is pretty strong give it a little bit of time and it will kind of absorb and settle into your skin but at first it does definitely kind of just sit there and yet yeah, all I can smell is that friggin this is their we're gonna do brows now um the covergirl easy breezy brow micro fine define so yeah it just looks like a pencil it's got a little spoolie on one end I got the shade oh itchy nose um I got the shade soft brown is a twist top I'm gonna do some little hair like strokes with this baby I don't know for soft brown it seems quite dark but it is working quite well definitely dark definitely dark 
honestly, ever since having my brows tattooed, oh, changed my life. I wish I had it done years ago. That worked quite well, but yeah, it's definitely dark. Definitely dark. Next product, we're gonna move on to the eyes. This is their, this is just their eyeshadow quad in the shade 710 Va Va Violet. These kind of palettes just remind me so much of when I was a teenager and kind of getting into makeup and I never owned, you know, any kind of actual makeup palettes in a way, like, you know, like the ones that you get these days. So these little quads were basically all we had back in the day. I just, yeah, oh my God, it just brings back so many memories. Again, like all this ingredients is in a freaking different language. What is going on? I'm gonna see what these baby can actually do. It does come with one of these delightful little sponge tip applicators, which we are not gonna use. I'm gonna go in with this gray silvery type shade. It is shimmery. My gosh, it is glittery. It does, it is quite a nice shade and it does seem quite pigmented, but yeah, it's, um, it's glittery. I think all these shades are actually quite glittery. Yay. It seems so strange to only have like four colors to work with, you know what I mean? Like I'm using um, my gingerbread palette as my mirror and it's like, I'm used to being like, oh, I'll use these two for the transition. I'll use this to darken it. I'll use this for the outer crease. <laughs> It's actually a lot more simple, so I can see why these kind of things are good if you're starting out with makeup. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not bagging it out or anything like that. Now I'm gonna go in with more of a dome brush, the darkest shade, and I'm going to deepen up this outer portion of my eye. Again, this is a shimmery, metallic -y shade. It does have a fair bit of pigment, which is nice. Like, yeah, a decent amount of pigment. All right, I'm gonna go back in with that first brush we used. There's still a little bit of that kind of gray shade on it. So I'm basically just going back in and gonna try and soften out this color in with the gray shade that we did in that crease. I am just gonna go in with the first shade. So this, uh, I was gonna say this does seem to be a matte shade, but it's still has a bit of mm, definitely like violet reflect to it. I'm now gonna do the brighter purple color on the crease. You can definitely cut the crease, but in all honesty, I'm not gonna bother because these are all the same kind of shimmery shade and they're not really that much variation between it. So there's not much point. It's gonna apply it damp. So this is like the bright kind of violety shade. So yeah, I mean, the shadows are nice, you know, but they're quite pigmented. I think they may not have some staying power. I'm not too sure. Like, I don't want to just say they don't have staying power, but I can tell they'd probably disappear into nothing if you over blend them. And because they are all the same kind of formula, they, it almost like blurs into one kind of look, even though I've used four different shades and it's just kind of looks like I've used a purple and a dark color in, in a way, you know what I mean? They may have definitely some different palettes out there. So this may just be, you know, for this particular quad palette. But I think if you're used to things like this, you won't like it and you're just gonna waste your money. But if you're very new to makeup, you're starting out with makeup and you just wanna have a bit of a play and a practice, then yeah, I think they're great because, you know, they're not overly expensive. You're not gonna be wasting your money. I guess it just depends where you are at with makeup and what you like and don't like with makeup. Before we do anything else, I'm gonna do my under eye concealer and then we'll blend that away and then we can smoke out the, the shadows and do liner and stuff like that. So I've got this Outlast All Day Soft Touch Concealer. This says it is a concealer with a soft touch tip for gentle application a and a lasting for formula that gives you a smooth matte finish that lasts all day instantly erase the appearance of dark circles and blemishes it's oil free won't clog your pores oh wow okay it seems quite liquidy like it comes out of this little oh okay wow it's super super watery again this has got a strange smell to it all right, so under eyes, it does have a nice kind of illuminating quality. It does seem quite kind of what, like shiny or I, I don't know. It seems a little bit oily to me. 
And coverage wise, I think it's not too bad, but it's definitely not like the best coverage concealer in the world, especially if you want to cover like dark circles and things like that. I'm not saying it's not enough, but if you're used to like a shape tape concealer or something like that, you may not like this. This would be perfect for days when you just want like a light kind of wash of makeup if you just want to kind of pair a bb cream and a little bit of concealer or something or just use a concealer on its own i think this is great but if you're going for more of a full glam kind of full coverage type look i don't think that this is going to be the best for you so eyeliner i'm going to use the covergirl give me noir no, noir noir it's um intense black color it is a gel pot liner bold Drama 24 hour intensity. Uh, so yeah, it does come with a little brush as well. All right, dip into this baby. Oh, okay, it's not as soft as what I thought. It does have a stiffer kind of consistency, similar to like, I guess a brow pro made if you've kind of left it out to dry a little bit. Mine could just be old, who knows? But yeah, it's definitely not like a dip in and you can grab a shit ton of product. It's yeah, more of a drier formula. So I'm just loading up the end of that brush. I don't think we'll be able to create anything super crisp with this, but hey, we'll see. Man, it is like dry as a nun's tit. Yeah, it's not like fluid. I think this must just be old. I mean, I don't know. Oh my God. It looks awful. I mean, this could be nice on a waterline or just to tight line your eyes but i think to draw a wing with this oh god i don't like this formula at all oh man it is awful it's dry it's like it's like trying to friggin peanut butter i guess like it's dry it's kind of clumping it's catching I've gone back to the other brush because it's no better with my brush. I don't know. It might look good on camera, but in person, it's like... Let's see on the waterline. You know what it reminds me of? Like wax. It's like waxy. But not like a smooth wax. It's like a, you know, when you've got wax on your skin and you try and wash it off with water and it's like everything beads up on it. It kind of reminds me of that. Like trying to apply it on your waterline, which is more of a wet area. Like it's like, it's wanting to, to bead up. Like, look at that. Like it's not giving you a completely smooth, opaque color. Ugh. Okay, I'm definitely not a fan. Not a fan. All right, so for mascara, this is the Super Sizer Mascara. Quite a unique kind of brush. I think, you know, it's defining it quite nicely. It's not really giving my lashes any form of lift. And they are clumping a bit. Yeah, I guess not too bad I'm not really a massive mascara kind of person anyway because of my lashes um, I usually just wear falsies and then chuck on whatever that concealer like I'm feeling like it's done sweet FA like I'm gonna actually have to layer some more concealer on um, I'm gonna give it a shake to see if that improves the kind of thickness of it but I feel like you know even me just touching my skin when I was applying shadow or whatever, resting my hand there, it's just kind of... Mm. So, last portion is lips. I swear the color I picked was different to this. This looks like... Eh. This looks like it's been used. Honestly, this looks like it's been used. Look at this. Like, you'd expect a brand new lipstick to be completely clear at the top. Even in the packaging, it looks like, I mean, some of it could have maybe leaked out, but that's kind of creepy. I'm not gonna use that. If I can take that off, I will. I mean, yeah, some of it is quite a, a liquidy consistency, so some of it might have leaked through. I'm not saying it's been used, but 
I'm going to squeeze a lot of this out and try and just, yeah. So yeah, it is a kind of watery, thicker consistency. Very brown shade. It's an, I don't normally go for browns, but I swear it looked different online. Quite a nice color if you apply it quite lightly and it's hard to get it kind of even. It does leave kind of streaks and the inner portion of my lip where it is more damp or moist the color did definitely not want to go on that area so yeah. and yeah it is like not so much like sticky but you can but yeah you can feel it that is pretty much a full face using covergirl i'm so so happy that covergirl is now cruelty free and i definitely want to show support to them because i think a lot of companies are going to be watching covergirl and watching how this whole transition is and thinking like oh if it's going to work for covergirl then we'd like to do it as well sorry she's really loud so i do definitely want to support them but in all honesty i think the products that i bought myself the only one that i would say I, i'd like and i enjoy and I'd use again is the brow product even though it was quite dark it was easy to use I think the eyeliner was crap foundation stunk I mean it looks nice but it just I don't know maybe I'm used to different things maybe they have some better products within their range and I just bought the ones that don't work so well or don't work so well for me uh, so I you, you know I definitely do want to support them but I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more picky with what I purchase I guess Definitely their makeup does work well. I'm not saying it doesn't work. You can still create some nice looks with their makeup. But I think if you're kind of used to more high-end products, I don't know, it's just different because I've never used their products. So this is a real first impressions. Maybe they've got a whole different... Maybe they have a whole different kind of, I guess, ethos when it comes to makeup, a different kind of approach to their brand. But yeah, this is just my first kind of impression of it. I'll zoom you guys in. So yeah, my skin does look nice. I think the foundation has definitely kind of settled in. The concealer doesn't look too bad. It, it does feel a little bit tacky still. But yeah, I mean, the products work well. Like I, this eyeshadow look quite nice. So yeah, I mean, a little bit kind of like meh. But at the same time, I'm not gonna throw the, throw the whole company out the window. I want to still continue trying and supporting them because them being cruelty free is awesome. And it honestly makes such an, like a difference in the cruelty free community. There's no need to test on animals these days. Like for cosmetics, it's just not needed and very, very cruel. And many companies still do it. And yeah, I just, it's not needed. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. What did you guys think of me using it? Like seeing the products perform? Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, leave me a comment, give this video a like, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Kiss. Kiss. Yeah, good girl. Hey, blowing a kiss.